we're off. Right, so last one of the night, uh, the third and final of the Indian whiskies, and this particular one arrived in the post um, completely out of the blue, and I had no idea who it was from, and it turned out it was from my good friend, John Pitts, who used to be my assistant manager at the whiskey shop in York, took over as manager when I left, uh, and is now living the life of Riley in Pennsylvania. The swine. So um, he sent me this, and I think, I think it was a bottle of whiskey that we gave him as his leaving present, I think, but I can't remember, because that was the reason for him, se him sending it to me, because I definitely had a bottle of this, and I haven't got it anymore. So, and I think it was my dad's. I'm, I, my memory is so hazy of this. There was definitely a bottle of Peter Scott in existence. So this is Peter Scott, Pride of India. Now he's put malt whiskey in quotation marks, but I think this might actually be one of the very few, if not only, Indian actual malt whiskies. But I'm not even sure if it's single malt. This is the thing. So it was launched in 1968, May of 1968, by a company called Code India Limited, who's, um, who would actually produce it in Bangalore, which is here. And in 1974, they registered the trademark of Peter Scott as the brand name. Um, and in 1986, the Scottish Whiskey Association then took Code to court. Um, basically, it was trademark court saying that um, you can't call it Peter Scott, you've got to remove the trademark because um, the connotations are that it is Scotch uh, and therefore you are deceiving customers. So um, they actually lost the case um, in, uh, God, when was it? No, it was 1989, they lost the case. Um, but they then appealed um, and ended up winning in 2000. And, they appealed in 2007, and I think it was 2012 that they ended up winning the appeal. Um, and supposedly, there was actually a, an employee of Code, a guy called Peter Warren, who said that the whiskey was named after his dad, who was also called Peter, who was also a Scotsman, or he was a Scot. So it was Peter Scott because it's Peter the Scot. Very, very loose connotations. One place I read said they also claimed that it was because of um, uh, Captain Scott, the explorer, whose son was called uh, Peter Scott, and it was named after him, even though his surname is spelled with two T's, and this is Peter Scott with one T. All very iffy. The re it boils down to the fact that the fact they won the appeal was the fact that they registered the trademark in 1974. They didn't, uh, Scotch Whiskey Association didn't take them to court until 1986. And they basically turned around and went, look, you knew this was here for over a decade and you didn't do anything for 12 years. So you let us go on with it for 12 years where apparently there was no problem. And then all of a sudden you decided to take us to court. So it got thrown out, basically. It was decided that it's not obvious that it's Scotch, although, this is the best picture I can find of the packaging, and the packaging is not making it obvious it's Indian. Let's put it that way. Um, so yeah, so it's it's kind of like they they are still going. It's still Peter Scott now. I've not found much information about this. Very very little information I could find about it. But the bits that I have managed to find don't make any mention of molasses based neutral spirit which is what the vast majority of the indian whiskies are based on it's a combination of molasses based neutral spirit along with some malt whiskey it's like a blended whiskey but rather than grain you use molasses which is essentially making rum then you add some indian whiskies in and there are some places that are in scotch such as the two that i just had the royal challenge and the signature but what i'm reading about this although it is very very little is this is actually they are saying this is malt whiskey they're not saying it's single malt Maybe it's a couple of distilleries dotted around the place, but it's all from the same company. But it does seem to be, the, the evidence is pointed to the fact that this is an actual 100% Indian malt whiskey. Now, I did read in one place, um, one article that turned around and said that this was um, the only 100% Indian malt whiskey, so it's the best scotch that you're gonna find. It's not scotch, because it's not from Scotland. But, I don't know. The thing is that because I'm reading so much about Indian whiskey having this molasses-based spirit as, a, as the base, I can't help but feel that this one might also be. But it, it, everything's pointed to the fact that this could actually be 
a malt whiskey from India and this is as close as you're actually going to get to a proper Indian whiskey so we'll see price wise not the foggiest like I say I know I had a bottle of this and I think I might have given it to John as a leaving present so John if you're watching if you can put in the comments or let me know on Facebook why you sent me this why where we had the bottle did I have the bottle and give it to you or did you have the bottle and give it to me but I haven't got it or what I don't know I honestly can't remember um, if I had it I think it was from my dad and I think my dad had it donkey's years and he couldn't remember where it was from I think but my memory is so blurry I've no idea not just because this is my third of the night because my memory is shocking so very very dark quite a dark color indeed no age statement on this I've no idea what the age is again it's India really hot climate lots of evaporation from casks maximum eight years I'm, I'm willing to bet so whether coloring has been added this to darken it down depending on what they've matured it in as well but that's that's a, a like an almost burnt orange color it's kind of like orange marmalade type color it really is okay now so 42.8% so the three Indians that I've had tonight is 42.8% I can't remember the percentage of the bagpiper I don't really want to sniff this again which is why I'm carrying on talking because that was a really weird nose um, I don't remember what percentage of the bagpiper was but that probably was 42.8% it seems to be a common theme let's try this again what the F is going on there That is bizarre. That's really bizarre. What the hell does that smell like? It smells like... It smells like burnt orange peel and cleaning fluid. Oh, what the hell? There is some random shit going on in this. this and I, this is just the nose. There's like a, um, it's like uh, there's strawberry laces or there's, there's the kids sweets where it's basically like a white fondant inside um, a, a strawberry jelly straw with the fondant inside. And it's a really hard strawberry, like uh, strawberry candy, but it's really, really concentrated. And if you buy cheap ones, it's really, really artificial. And that's what this nose has got as well. And petrol, it smells of petrol. It actually smells like if you go and fill your car up and you accidentally get some on your hands off the pump and you smell your fingers and it's that really intense gasoline smell. Now, this isn't quite as bad as Fujikai, but it ain't far off. Jesus. I've got some of this left as well. Ooh, which lucky bugger out there am I going to foist that on? That's weird. There's so much going on in there, but it's such a bag of wrong flavours. It's not like there's loads and loads of stuff on the nose, but it's all really good things that are kind of bouncing off each other. This is this is like petrol and cut grass, but cut grass has been left on the lawn for a week, so it's gone a little bit wet and mouldy. And, and burnt orange peel and paint thinner and really really artificial sweets off a of pick and mix Jesus Christ that's alright not sure I can do this thank Christ there is nothing on the nose that there is on the palate there is also nothing on the palate there's nothing. <laughs> I get a tiny little bit of oak. It's quite a rich mouthfeel, but there's nothing else to follow through with that mouthfeel. It really is like you're drinking tap water. Isn't it? There's, there's very, very little. There's a slight oakiness to it. There's a slight maltiness to it, but... It's, yeah, there's nothing. There's absolutely nothing on that whatsoever. But, fortunately, it's not what's on the nose because the nose is terrible. Absolutely awful. It's not great on the palate. 
but I wouldn't even mix that. In fact, taking a larger mouthful of it brings a lot more of that oakiness out and it's not fantastic. Fortunately, the palate is nowhere near as bad as the nose because the nose is one of the worst things I've nosed in a long time. Not quite as bad as Fujikai, but it's a close second. Fortunately, the palate isn't as bad as the Fujikai by any stretch. But it's just kind of chewy, chewy wood, but not even a lot of that. Yeah, not great. John, thanks, but no thanks. And I'm gonna try and find somebody that's deserving of this, that I like, that might appreciate it, not my worst enemy, because that's for the Fujikai. Um, right, that's me done. That's Indians done at the challenge. Interesting, not sure I'd recommend any of them, but um, I can't even remember what I'm gonna do next. Some weird country. Um, so I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.